Hello and welcome to the Really Dicey Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about Community, a television show on Netflix, and particularly two episodes. The 14th episode of the second season, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And the 10th episode of the fifth season is Advanced, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. These episodes are, they're great to show to people, I think, that have are interested in either game mastering or playing or, or both. There's so many great things about these two episodes that I think anyone in, in general will get a lot out of when it comes to uh, role playing, when it comes to uh, the, the, I guess, the ethics of playing, um, the ethics of game mastering. I love these episodes. The first when you, I'd never heard of the show. Um, so um, when you told me about them and I watched them, the first thing I got to say is they were hilarious. They were, they were so much fun. The show is really good too. I've since gone back and started reading the show and watching the show. Hmm. The episodes were a lot of fun. And when they brought out the books, as you said, I just had this overwhelming sense of nostalgia because those books those are my books. That's what I played in high school and college. And so it was, it was really amazing to see this. And I got to say, it was, it was weird to see them on screen. It's, 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 it's kind of weird to be a mainstream, or at least mainstream enough that they do television shows about your hobby. Because when I grew up, we, we played, you know, in the dark corners. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't want we didn't want anybody to talk about it because when they were talking about it, it was usually the satanic panic. So yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Even nowadays, depending where I'm at, uh, I have to be careful about it. You know, um, yeah. it's it's easier to say role playing like role playing games, but if I say Dungeons and Dragons, sometimes someone kind of looks at you and like, oh, you you played that game, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So no, there's they're... still there's still a bit of a stigma to it to this day. A bit, yeah, yeah, and and there's obviously some jokes about that in the show. But uh, what I was impressed with was the show quickly went beyond that, and uh, hit a lot of really great issues. Uh, I, you know, um, the DM in the show is a, a perfect example of lots of things. But you know, one message is play to your strengths. Um, he's not, the, as he says, he's not the best at names. Um, <laughs> which is painfully obvious. He's not particularly good at improvising. Sometimes they get him off the script and he struggles, but what he is good at is he's fantastic at NPCs. He does the voices really well. He plays them greatly. Um, and he's great at the setting. He's, he's just poured so much work into the setting. He's kind of that obsessive compulsive DM who wrote pages and hundreds of pages about their setting. And so, uh, you know, there's a le the lesson there is to play to your strengths, know what you're good at. So the games that they play in these two episodes are, are just perfect examples of several things. One, uh, you know, obviously Pierce is a toxic player, terrible player. Yes. Um, there's, the, there's a scene where uh, one of the characters, uh, Hector the Hugely Endowed, <laughs> <laughs> the another well terrible down. name. Yes, the well endowed. Yes, another terrible name. Uh, he uh, slash she um, seduces this elven maid who has a flock of pegasus that they need. And that's a perfect example of taking things too far. Uh, it's played for laughs. It's a great scene. But uh, the, the player and the DM really uh, completely in an excruciating detail, um, you know, role play out the sexual liaison between the player character and the NPC and the rest of the table literally says they're uncomfortable with it. And, but, they, <laughs> but the DM keeps running through the table. Now it makes for tele great television. It's a very funny scene, but that's exactly the sort of thing you do not want to do. That's why, um, that's why you play with an X card or something that someone can hold up and say, "I'm uncomfortable with this scene." So yeah. I, I actually, I actually had a scenario once, a situation once, where um, a character seduced uh, an elder maid and then wanted to get into details of the sexual conquest of it, 
I'm trying to be as, as PG as possible sure. about it. Sure. And I, I, it. I told the player, I told the player, no, <laughs> I just straight up told him, no, like that's, I just feel really uncomfortable doing that. Um, yep. Let's just skip ahead and say that stuff happened and then let's move on. Cause I, that, that's a, that's a different type of role playing that I'm not interested in. I'm with you. I, for, as a DM, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, but even if, a D, even if you're comfortable with it as a DM, you have to look around the table. If someone, even just one person is uncomfortable with it, skip the scene, fade the black. You know, don't, don't sit there and make people listen to you two role play this out because that's weird. Yeah. Um, so the other, you know, one of the other things that uh, the, the, the games highlight is the danger of, ro of railroading. So some, in the second episode, um, the DM tries to railroad the plot. And there's an experienced player. And he says, I'm not going to do it. He revolts. And he says, I'm going to go south. <laughs> and and uh, to the DM's credit, he pulls out his giant binder of setting details and says, OK, go south. <laughs> so you know. Um, that's the sort of um, that's the sort of GM, you know. That's that would be kind of an old school GM. That, that's kind of the okay. I'll do whatever you guys say. If you guys want to just ditch my adventure and go south, go for it. And um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna let the players do that, you have to be one really good at improv, which um, Abed wasn't, or two, just have an incredibly detailed setting so you know what happens when they go south. And that's what. Um, Abed, uh, Abed was really good at. That was his DM. That was his DM yeah. strength. The biggest thing I got from these episodes uh, w was um, Abed's um, DMing style. Uh, I thought it was one of the clearest examples of the old school that I've ever seen. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. I, I, I love the way Abed uh, dungeon mastered or ran his campaign. I agree that the dungeon master should be as neutral as possible when it comes to them. When it comes to their to their stories, keep the rules intact. Because I, I know in the past, I know I made a mistake a few times of sometimes letting a character like or players get what they want too easily, uh, fudge the rules a little bit so that uh, yeah, I want them to have a good time. But uh, I don't want to make the mistake of just because they have a good time doesn't mean that characters get to live at the end. Sometimes uh, character deaths they they enjoy that just as well if it's a if it's a good fair death. Uh, yeah. When you when you give too many liberties like that away to um, to to your char to these characters, you you uh, have the possibility of having your world not taken seriously by your players, and that's never a good thing. You want your players sure. to take the, the rules that you have in your world seriously so that everyone has a good time. Because um, when, when, you don't have that like one player uh, mess up everything for the, all the other players. It has to be really balanced. And I thought the way Abed handled that was, uh, the way he was played at least, it was uh, magnificent. Yes, I, you know, I, I agree. And um, he says, he has some great quotes. He, you know, just exactly the point. He says, I have to be impartial or the game has no meaning. <laughs> My favorite line, one of the characters turns to him, one of the players turns to him and says, you're not helping. And he says, I'd be a pretty poor DM if I was. <laughs> hmm. But um, I think this, um, these two episodes really highlight the difference between uh, an old school game and a newer narrative type of game. Um, not only in his style, but even the way the, the stories are set up. In both cases, the players um, have set up the game to accomplish something outside of a game. So they're trying to use the game as therapy. Uh, in, the, in the first episode, to make Fat Neil feel better about himself. And in the second episode, together, to reconcile a father and son. And that really, two things struck me about that. One, um, that's very narrative. They had a narrative goal in mind for their game. They wanted their game to be about this and tell this particular kind of story. Because they thought it would have this sort of effect on the players. And um, the second thing, 
is two, they were using completely the wrong game. <laughs> D&D is not that game, and uh, Abed is not that DM to do that. There are games that are narrative, that are very narrative, see our review of 7C, um, that these players could have used to tell exactly the sort of story they wanted to. In those sort of games, you can set up your player, I mean, your character, and the game. There are rules in the setting that allow you to say, I'm going to tell a game about fathers and sons reconciling. Or I'm going to I'm going to specifically make a character who at the end of the game is going to realize that he has friends and his self-worth isn't tied to his weight. And that's perfectly fine. I, you know, I, I don't want to step on any toes. If you're if you're having fun, you're playing it correctly. But I think it's telling that in these two stories, the games succeed both as games, they're fun games, and they exceed, they succeed by having the effect that the players want them to. You know, Neil feels better about himself, and the father and the son become reconciled to a point. They become succeed, they succeed specifically because the games weren't narrative. In both cases, the games went wildly off track, and the DM was impartial. He didn't bend the rules to stick to the narrative. You know, um, so in the first game, Pierce totally um, wrecks the game. He comes in, he cheats, he, he uh, you know, by, by getting out of school, out of game information. Um, he makes the players feel terrible. He, he does horrible things to the other players, but the DM, stays within his lane. He says, okay, these are the rules. I'm going to play by the rules. He doesn't, you know, tell Pierce, no, you can't do that. He doesn't cheat by fudging roles. He doesn't help out the players, the, the good players. He doesn't help out Neil at all. And yet at the end, Neil succeeds. He overcomes Pierce, uh, who's the terrible player. And I think it's really telling that as the players are, are picking up their dice and leaving the room, Neil says that this was the best game I ever played. And he wants to play again. And I think it's the best game he ever played because it went off the rails and because he, he succeeded despite the odds. You know, he wasn't helped along by the DM. He, he succeeded. Um, he beat the odds. And I think that's the value of an old school game where the, the DM is completely impartial. You know, he, he, um, Abed has another quote. I love this quote. I wrote this one down. This is, he says, I owe you nothing, talking to the players. I am a DM. I create a boundless world and bind it by rules. Too heavy for a bridge, it breaks. Get hit take damage. Spend an hour in front of someone's door arguing over who's going to get to kill him, he leaves by the back door. You know, um, Abed didn't cheat to save his story. He didn't cheat to save the players. He didn't even cheat to help the people outside the game. He didn't cheat to help the father and son reconcile. This was the game that he set up, and he ran it by those rules. And I think that's a great way to play. And that's how I like playing. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with the narrative game if you want to if you want to play it that way. And I, I don't I hope no one takes offense at this. It sounds to me, it's like playing a video game and you can set the difficulty levels. So you can set your difficulty level to easy or even God mode, which means you can't die. And then you can play the game straight through. And that can be a lot of fun because you see the entire game. You don't get killed on level two and never see what's on level five. You know, you get to see everything. And so you get to see the entire story of the game. That's a lot of fun. And that's kind of the narrative version of, of, of role playing. You know? um, the other old school is like setting the difficulty on very difficult. The game's gonna make no allowances for you. You're gonna have to 
fight and scrape and die and start again and scrape and fight and die and start again. You know, it can be hard. It can be frustrating. Uh, you know, well, if it's hard and frustrating and not fun, stop. But it can be really rewarding. You may not get to see the entire game, the whole story laid out everywhere. But the successes you do get are going to be just that much sweeter because you earn them. You earn them really hard. You know, you, you earn them through, through pluck and determination and never giving up and being clever and finding ways around problems and, and lucky die rolls. It came down to that one die roll and you, you managed to pull off, you know, rolling that critical success and, and you did that impossible thing. Those are the games I think you're going to remember years later. Um, that's what you know, the old school revival is about. And to me, that's a great way of playing the game. And uh, these episodes were a great example of that. All right. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time.